praise be to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Today, I would like to continue our exposition of Leroy Edwin, Edwin Frome's book, Evangelism. This is part two, pre-existent and self-existent. The plan that changed the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Father in heaven, I pray that your people may be awakened from their slumber, that they may be filled with the spirit of truth, your Holy Spirit, not God, the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayer. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Leroy Fromm admitted that he found nothing in the writings of our pioneers concerning the Trinity. And that he studied the subject in books outside of our faith. He even had the audacity to imply that men outside of Adventism had a deeper spiritual insight into God than our own pioneers. So what did he admit to doing next? He said that the plan was to change our standard works and eliminate what our pioneers taught regarding the Godhead. Many believe that the quotes called EV or evangelism are from a book written by Ellen White, but it was compiled by Fromm in 1946, which was 30 years after her death. The headings and the subheadings and bolded text before the quotes in his book are not her words, and some included the word Trinity, which he never wrote. Evangelism, page 612, 615, paragraph 2, about pre-existent, self-existent. Christ in the pre-existent, self-existent. Christ is the pre-existent and self, I mean, self-existent son of God. In speaking of his pre-existence, Christ carries the mind back through the dateless ages. He assured us that there never was a time when he was not in close fellowship with eternal God. He, to whose voice the Jews were then listening, had been with God as one brought up with him. Signs of the Times, August 29, 1900, Evangelism, page 615, paragraph 2. Preexistence refers to the existence of Christ as the Son of God before his incarnation. And the creation of all things. It does not mean to have always existed and implies a beginning. The Trinitarian view actually denies the pre existence of Christ in the full sense, as it denies the personality of Christ as the literal Son of God before his birth in Bethlehem. Ellen White confirms this below, where she refers to all the fallen churches which are Trinitarian, as they all deny the pre existence of Christ as the literal Son of God before his incarnation. The fallen denominational churches are Babylon. Babylon has been fostering poisonous doctrines, the wine of error. This wine of error is made up of false doctrines, such as the natural immortality of the soul, the eternal torment of the wicked, the denial of the pre-existence of Christ prior to his birth in Bethlehem, and advocating and exalting the first day of the week above God's holy and sanctified day. Ellen White Review and Herald, September 12, 1893. Self-existent Son of God. Self-existent means existing independently of other beings. This applies to the Father and the Son, who are not reliant on other beings to exist. Since the Father gave his life to his Son, he has the same self-existent life as his Father. Whereas the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in him. In himself, John chapter 5, verse 26. If Jesus had always existed alongside the Father, as the Trinity doctrine claims, then God could not have given life to his Son, as he would always have life. But Scripture reveals this is impossible. Dateless ages. Time, as we know, it is measured by the spirits in the heaven. For example, a year for the earth to revolve around the sun, a month, for the moon to revolve around the earth 
and a day for one rotation of the earth. And it is from this that our date is derived. Hence, the time before the creation of all things is called the dateless ages. As there was nothing in the heavens to measure time by. There never was a time when Christ was not in close fellowship with his father. There never was a time when I was not in close connection with my father either. But there was a time when my father was not in close connection, fellowship with me, which was before I was born. The same applies to the father and son, obviously. Had been with God as one brought up with him. Ellen White is quoted Proverbs 8, is quoting Proverbs 8, 22 to 30, where she says that Jesus was brought forth from his father and was brought up with him. And that's declaring Jesus is the literal son of God. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before he, his works of old. I was set up from everlasting. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Proverbs 8, 22, 30. Ellen G. White, Patriarchs and Prophets, 34, paragraph 1. Through Solomon, Christ declared, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding in water. Before the fountain, mountains were settled. Before the hills was I brought forth. Ellen White, Spirit, Science of the Times, August 29, 1900. We'll continue reading on part three next time. May God continue to bless you and keep you.